I was trying to parse out what the girls in the seat next to me had meant, but I was interrupted. Madame Taglioni took the stage. Her draping emerald gown skated across the floor, and even with her limp, she had the unmistakable movement of someone who had studied dance, although the headshot I had seen of her had been from fifty years ago. The woman now standing so comfortably in the spotlight looked remarkably young. Her hair was a bright white, pulled back into a tight dancer's bun, but her face was unweathered by age. She looked to be in her forties, tops. Thank you for coming, she spoke into the microphone. Once again, my dancers and I are so honored to be able to share this with you. Her voice was deep and rich, and she spoke slowly. Not in the rush way some people do when they're on stage and nervous. She smiled. We've got quite a show for you tonight. As she spoke, shapes moved from the wings of the stage. Nearly thirty dancers quickly and gracefully lined up behind their leader, young men and women, ages looking to be from seventeen to twenty-one. Quite a few were dressed in plain tulle tutus or pants, as brisk a white as Taglioni's hair. A few were in more complex outfits. A handsome young man, all in lilac, wearing a crown that sparkled so brightly in the lights that I thought it must have been made with real jewels and gold. A young woman dressed all in black, a large white ruffle around her neck, her face painted pale, but her eyes smudged with black. But my eyes were only focused on them for a moment before being drawn to the last figure to join the stage. She walked lightly up beside Madame Taglioni as the latter smiled at her proudly before speaking into the microphone. May I present to you, in this year's 50th anniversary production of Le Papillon, from Madame Taglioni's ballet, your farfalla, Emily Livery. The girl sitting next to me let out a little excited gasp as Emma Livery stopped, turned, and curtsied at the audience. Her costume was beautiful. Cream tulle and muslin interrupted by patterned blue silk that ran up onto her silver-lined corset, continuing to the large, elaborate butterfly wings that sprung from the fabric over her shoulder blades. She smiled, and the audience cheered. But I didn't trust it. I realize that ballet is incredibly difficult. It's more of a physical feat than the majority of sports, and therefore I know there must be a great deal of stress that dancers go to to prepare for their performances like this, especially with the scale and fame of this particular performance. But her face looked... pained. She held her curtsy completely still. She kept her smile wide and gleaming, but... Even from my seat, I could tell it didn't meet her eyes. As the cheering died down, the girl with the goldfish ring leaned closer to me and I bent to meet her. They're beautiful, aren't they? The wings? I nodded impatiently. If the girl was going to talk, I wanted to know more about what she said earlier, but hoping that Emma made it, whatever that means. Before I could ask, the girl kept talking. I hear they only get sewn in three weeks before the performance. I frowned. What? I know. They only give her three weeks to figure out how to dance with the weight of the wings. It must throw off everything. Her spins, her jumps. The girl tacked on a few more things to this list, but I had momentarily stopped listening. Instead, I turned back to Emma. What I thought had been fabric on her shoulder blades was something... much worse. The actual fabric of her dress scooped down in the back, perfectly displaying the beautiful blue wings that had been visibly sewn into the flesh of the girl's back. Pink scar tissue, intermittent with blue thread, shone shiny in the stage lights, and I felt my stomach turn. I glanced around at the faces in the audience to catch any glimpses of horror or disgust to match what I felt inside, but I saw nothing but awe-stricken delight. 
you know, in their 32nd year, they only made it part of the way through Act 1 because Prince Shalma's crown got caught on Farfalla's wings and ripped the whole thing off. Sickeningly, she giggled. They had to give everyone refunds, but they hadn't had any trouble since. My favorite character is probably... The girl prattling was cut off as Madame Taglioni began to speak again. It has been my pleasure to watch Emma grow into this role. Although it was tough competition this year, it can only be one Farfalla. The woman smiled fondly at the girl, like a cat, glaring over a mouse it had caught. And Emma has certainly earned her wings. At this, the crowd broke into an uproarious laughter. I only felt more nauseous. This year, we are thrilled to have a very special guest. There was a whisper amongst the audience as Madame Taglioni motioned to the right of the stage. Here to pass the torch. Another smattering of laughter that I didn't quite understand. Is last year's Farfalla, Franziska Wild. There was a creak of metal that reverberated throughout the theater as the crowd began to applaud and cheer. A tall man dressed all in black began to push a wheelchair onto the stage. In it was a severely disfigured young woman. She wore a light pink dress that covered much of her body and a scarf around her head, but it couldn't hide the extensive damage that had been done to virtually every inch of her skin that remained visible. Her face had the same sheen to it that the scar tissue on Emma's back had. The light pink of poorly healed skin blended in with the blush of the dress. Wispy strands of brittle hair came down to her shoulders, one of which ended in a knobby stump where the arm had been removed. Still, she smiled at the crowd, her face creasing like balled up paper. And disturbingly enough, when she leaned forward slightly, I could see them. Small, blue, tattered shapes protruding from her back, and I recognized what they were. Farfalla's blue butterfly wings cut down to the root. The man left Franziska, next to Madame Taglioni and Emma, and stepped forward to lower the microphone to her height. As she spoke... Her voice sent a shiver down my spine. Hello. She had started with all the tone and texture of a metal fork against ceramic. I'm happy to be here. She carefully turned her head to look at Emma. There is no greater joy than to perform on this stage as Farfalla. I wish you luck. The resurgence of clapping at this, as Madame Taglioni kept her serene smile, I could see Emma's falter. She was looking at Franziska, frail and broken in the bright lights of the stage. Her hand unconsciously moved towards the impressive wings on her back, and her eyes traced the ruined remains of the ones on Franziska. There was something in her eyes, like she was witnessing something that brought her pain and understanding all at once. Unfortunately, I'd pieced together what it was. She was looking at her future. Soon after, Act One of Le Papillon began. Hey there, kids. Thank you so much for listening to tonight's story, and I wanted to tell you thank you, you know, for listening to me at all. I'm actually coming up on doing this for ten whole years. Come January 4th, I will have been doing YouTube for ten years. So that's a hell of a thing, man. And honestly, it, it means nothing without all of you. So thank you for that. Thank you for listening on YouTube or on the podcast. I also want to give a very big thank you shout out to all of you guys out there on Patreon. If you guys want to check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, you're able to support the show, uh, support me, support my cats, support 
you know, uh, being being cool folks out there like people like these. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Mr. Thud, Ken Lando Higuchi, Chumpinski, Bobby Carmen, Nico Kyle, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Raven Hart, 1-800 Nightmare, King Hades F13, Unknown Nobody, Joshua McMeekin, Michael Scarborough, Kazen, this is my real name, no shit, Jason VB Wilson, Infernal One, Little Wolf Gaming, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Niels, Hades Nephew, Jordan Wayne Deckard, Bradley Lipe, Ann Charon, Acid System, Mike Bullock, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brianna Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiri the Sloth, Thomas Burgett, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon, like I really can't thank you enough. Uh, and everybody who's down there in the description, thank you guys so much as well. And everybody who's not on either of those tiers, you just have a dollar on Patreon. I, I really, I can't thank you guys, like, for making these these past 10 years incredible this this entire time i've ever spent on youtube on podcasting everything amazing and all of you who are at home listening thank you guys so much for listening i hope you all have a wonderful happy holidays and sweet dreams